हेलो गाइज वेलकम टू आर्ट एनिमेट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर स्टार्टिंग इट टूर आई वॉन्ट टू थैंक यू गाइज अ लॉट बिकॉज आई रिसेंटली हिट फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड सब्सक्राइबर सो थैंक यू सो 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 मच गाइज सो द आइडियाज आर टू मेक अ कार अ वेरी नाइस कार अ वेरी नाइस लैम्प एंड आप दही ले आए idea let's make a super high quality chitter in blender mommy chitter and you know what this is the most dangerous weapon of all time without wasting any time let's just dive right into blender uh -huh. i got a bad feeling about this <laughs> after 5 minutes why so yeah without wasting any time let's start the tutorial so first of all i'm going to model the cube but before modeling it i'm going to delete the camera and the light Now I'm going to select this cube and then scale it down in the z axis like this. Now I'm going to go to top view and then scale it in the y axis. Like this. And in case you don't understand what I say, you can look over here. The button I am pressing will be shown over here. So it will help you. So yeah, let's just model the shoe sole. Now I'm going to give it a sole shape to this cube. So just press control R in edit mode. and then i guess three loop cuts will be enough so yeah let's just add three loop cuts and then just select this loop cut and press double g and then move it a bit in the y axis and then same for this move it a bit back now i'm going to select this one and then move it in the x axis like this and then select these vertices move it in the x axis same for this just a bit like this Now I'm going to add a loop cut over here. Now it's not straight so I want to make it straight. So I'm going to press S, X and then I'm going to press 0. And it would be perfectly straight. Now I'm going to press double G to slide it like this. Now I'm going to select these and then delete them because I'm going to add a mirror modifier. Just add modifier and add a mirror modifier to it like this. And then enable clipping. So now this is not very nice but we're going to make it nice so now I'm going to make the top you know the top part so yeah first of all I'm going to add a subdivision modifier so add a subset modifier like this and then the viewport level should be 2 like this and then save it now I'm going to move it up and then I'm going to apply it So yeah and now I'm going to apply not right now but later so yeah let's just select this edge like this and then move it down sorry this edge and then I'm going to move it down All right now select this and then move it down but just enable the proportional editing option and then if you move it down you can see the area surrounding it is also moving down so yeah now this is not looking like a shoe this is looking like a soap i guess so we'll gonna work on it right now so just go to vertex select and then select this vertices and then move it over here you just want to you just want to move this side don't worry about this side because shoes are not symmetrical from the both side so we're going to apply the mirror modifier and then we're going to settle it so just focus on this side like this and then move this in the y axis like this and then for this also move this in the y axis like this so i guess this is better for now all right now i'm going to make the upper part so just select these four vertices sorry faces and then extrude them turn off the proportional editing option and now let's just rotate this like this and then press extrude move it over here then rotate this 
and then press extrude and then move it right over here and then extrude it and then move it over here just select this edge move it a bit on the x-axis and then rotate it like this move it in the z-axis now same for this move it in the x and z-axis and last one this so yeah this is really bad right now but we are gonna make it good now apply the mirror modifier and just go to y-axis just turn on the x-ray mode press one and then select these vertices and then press s z and zero so now you can see they are flat but i don't want to make them fully flat so just scale it in the z-axis like this and then move it in the z-axis select this edge move it over here and then scale it down a bit like this all right now just select this edge press ctrl v to bevel it move it in the z-axis a bit wait a second what is happening over here all right okay now bevel this and then e to extrude and then s to scale it inwards but first just add a modifier which would be our subdivision modifier and give it a two levels of subdivision modifier now if i move it in the z-axis like this all right first of all let's just see what's going over here there's an issue i guess so just zoom in. all right x delete the edge now it's nice now press ctrl b to bevel this and then e and then s to scale it down and then scale it in the z-axis also like this yeah i guess this is okay for now let's just make it a bit bigger so yeah like this and then press e and then scale it just a bit down so yeah this is okay for now and yeah let's just add one loop cut here one loop cut here and then select both loop cuts and then move it down by pressing double g to slide it like this all right now just move it in the z-axis a bit all right now you can see these vertices are not working properly so just enable this auto merge option and then press double g and then just don't move it and press uh, and then left click now if i bevel this this is still making a problem so let's see all right this has faces in it so just select these faces and then press delete and then faces now if i bevel this yeah now it's doing perfectly now i'm gonna add a loop cut over here and a loop cut over here so that these would be a bit sharper and flat so yeah this is nice now let's just make this chitter or maybe sandal a bit not symmetrical because it's it's perfect from this side but from this side it's not really good so just turn on the proportional editing and then move it like this and yeah just select this and then move it over here then also move this one then move this over here like this and then just move this to x-axis like this and yeah this is much better all right now our shoe is ready now we just have to add the detailings to the sole and the texturing and the lightning we have to do it so let's just hurry up now i'm gonna select this shoes and i'm gonna add a displacement modifier press new then click on these options and now so first of all just select the shoe and then press ctrl a and all transforms to apply all transforms so yeah now i'm gonna go over here and then 
select the wood now I'm gonna go over here and then I'm gonna turn down the strength to like 0 0.1 and yeah but I want this effects to only affect this area so I'm gonna select this area like this now you can see they are not perfectly selected so yeah let's just select this area only so let's just des deselect the upper part and yeah this is selected now I'm gonna just go over here and then I'm gonna assign a vertex group to it now I'm gonna go to modify select this and then I'm gonna select that group now you can see the effect is only affecting the this this part you can if you want to select other parts like this one so just go over here select this part like this press shift and then select it if you want all right then if you have selected this then go over here and then assign the same group and now you can see it will also affect this area but i don't want that so yeah let's just remove it so just save it i'm gonna just name it super uh, tutorial chitter like this and yeah just select this go to modify step and mid level i'm gonna do it to zero yeah this is nice all right now i'm gonna go to edit mode and uh, i'm just gonna press 2 and then select this edge and i'm gonna move it in the z-axis turn off the proportional editing move this to z-axis then i'm gonna select this edge and also slide it a bit down so that this would be a bit smoother like this all right now let's just head right to materials so just select this and then go over here to materials tab save your project and then go to materials now you can see this material is assigned to all the shoe but i don't want it to affect this area so just select this area like this yeah and then select this area also and lastly select this area but it's not done also select the inner part like this don't select this area because we will not add another material to this area which would look very nice you will see in a minute what i'm talking about so just select this like this all right and lastly select this area also and yeah just click on this plus icon and then assign you can see this area has now second material and we'll get it a transparent type material all right this is looking nice now let's add a text and then we'll just turn you know a bit to advanced level with the materials so yeah let's just press shift a and then go to text and then click on the text and then go to top view just rotate it minus 90 degrees then go to text settings and then alignment i don't want it to be left i want it to be at the center so yeah let's just do that scale it down like this and then i want to change the font so just go to font area and then click on this i'm gonna select this font like this and yeah i'm gonna go to edit mode and type 420 so yeah 420 it is and just move it in the z-axis like this now i'm gonna add a shrink wrap modifier to it shrink wrap modifier and then target i'm gonna set to shoe now you can see it's interacting with the shoe so i don't want that intersecting i'm sorry so i'm just gonna set the offset to 0 0.0005 and you can see it's going in the z-axis but the opposite way so i'm just gonna add a minus over here and it's nice but i'm gonna increase the value minus 0 0.007 
or maybe I guess minus 0 0.0005 is okay for now but what if I do it like 0 0.001 alright I guess this is okay for now so yeah let's just duplicate this text like this and then delete the shrink wrap modifier from it or just delete the target from it and just move it over here so G to grab it and then R to rotate 90 degrees and then move it over here like this now I'm gonna select the target to the shoe and yeah now I'm gonna type chitter. and yeah so I'm gonna move it in the Z axis a bit and you can see if I move it in the Z axis the text would be looking like a janky and they will be closer to each other but if I move them down in the Z axis you can see they are a bit weird so yeah let's just leave it like that now the text is not showing but it's okay because this part would be transparent so we could see the text so yeah let's just get a bit advanced with the texturing so go to shading like this and by advanced i mean to just make it look good not like very hard or something i will just add two nodes first of all i'm gonna add a bump node and then i'm gonna add a noise texture only two nodes the normal i of the bump i will just match it with the normal of principal bstf not so advanced and the color from the noise texture i will just match it with the height of, of the bump like this now you can see nothing has happened over here it has happened but not over here that's because we have selected this material so i don't want that so i'm gonna just select this press ctrl c to copy it now delete them go over here and press ctrl v like this now it's in the pink area but still nothing has happened because we haven't plugged the bump to the principal bstf normal now you can see it's looking nice but not really nice so i'm gonna increase the scaling to like 200 or maybe 400 yeah 400 is nice but the strength is too much so i'm gonna just lower the value to 0 0.2 or maybe 0 0.3 it is yeah right click shade smooth and uh, just go to layout now i'm gonna select the object and then go to the transparent material and then i'm gonna go to transmission and I'm gonna turn on the values like to 1 and I'm gonna just put the roughness to 0 0.4 or maybe 0 0.3 like this now I'm gonna press A to select all but the shoe would be our active object so just select the shoe last now press ctrl P and then parent it not transparent just parent it and then add a camera now go to the view you want to see the camera from now just go press ctrl alt and numpad 0 and the camera will just automatically be there aligned there so yeah i'm gonna change the focal length 220 now i'm gonna go to output and then change the resolution like this move it in the z axis a bit and yeah i'm gonna just move it move the camera a bit closer to the shoe like this and yeah i'm gonna rotate the shoe to something like this now i want to animate this so how could i animate this just press i and then rotation now end frame i'm gonna do is 150 all right move it like this now go 250 and then rz 360 i and then rotation now you can see we have a simple animation but 
I don't want it to be that simple. So I'm gonna go to graph editor. I'm gonna delete the X and Y rotation on the Z rotation I'm gonna work with. Now rotate these handles so that the curve would be straight like linear. All right, like this. Now you can see the animation is very basic, but I want the animation to be fast from here because no one's gonna see the back of the shoe because it's not interesting so just go to frame 65 i and then press available so that the available keyframe would be over here now i'm gonna scale it down and rotate this something like this and then scale it a bit now you can see if i play the animation it's fast from here scale it a bit more and then rotate it pressing r to rotate it and yeah you can see now it's more nice now just rotate this like this scale it all right now from here also rotate this scale this and yeah if i now play the animation you can see it's nice and it's also looping so now i'm i don't want it to stop so i'm just gonna rotate this like this and then also like this now you can see it's continuously rotating it it's gonna be slow from here but it's not gonna stop so yeah now i'm gonna go to timeline and then just move it down like this select this camera and view viewport display and the perspective i'm gonna do it one like this and yeah now i'm gonna change the render engine to cycles i'm gonna change the device to gpu compute now i'm gonna turn on the denoiser and then i'm gonna change the max samples to 50 in the viewport and if i go to render view you can see our shoe is looking nice but there is no lightning it's looking boring so i'm gonna change the color of the world to black but first i'm gonna change the color of my shoe to like pink but a bit desaturated pink like this all right now i'm gonna add lightning so just press shift a Press shift A, add a light, area light, move it in the Z axis like this, scale this like this and the power I'm gonna do to 20 and the spread I'm gonna change it to 70 and then scale it a bit. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, rotate it in the Z axis 90 degrees and the X axis minus 90 degrees almost 90 degrees so yeah now i'm gonna move it behind this shoe like this change the value to 100 scale it first and then change the power to 100 or maybe 150 and then change the spread to 30 like this now i'm gonna go to top view I'm gonna duplicate this I'm gonna rotate this light and I'm gonna move it over here so now you can see it's looking nice but from the bottom the shoe is looking very dark so I'm gonna duplicate this light but first I'm gonna scale it now duplicate this light move it over here now I don't want to rotate it manually because it will take a lot of time so I'm gonna press shift T now if I press shift T the light will move and the light will rotate to my cursor so I'm gonna Put my cursor on the shoe and if i left click it now you can see the light is pointing on the shoe so just rotate the, rotating the light like this scaling it down moving it closer and then i'm gonna change the power to 70 and then spread i will be doing it like 50 and yeah now this light i want to do it the power 180 like this now you can see the lightning is really nice you can change the lightning if you want and uh, yeah this is it so yeah i'm just gonna 
stranger thing like i'm gonna add a plane because you can see there is a lot of reflection over here and i cannot see the r so i'm gonna move the plane in the y-axis and the x-axis now i'm gonna rotate this plane a bit now you can see i can see the r and the lightning is much better but i am seeing this plane which is not really i want so i'm gonna change the color to full black i'm gonna change the metallics value to one and the roughness values to one now you can see i'm still kind of seeing the plane so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to uh solid view and for this step you can either like leave it and then delete the plane and ignore the reflection but if you want to do this step you can just download blend the latest variant of blender so yeah because it's not in the you know older variants so just select this plane and then lastly select the light you want and press ctrl l and then go to link and then exclude now this will do is that this light will affect everything except this plane so this is called light linking and i have made a full video on it in detail if you want to see it you can go to my channel and you can see this tutorial light linking and yeah now select this plane again and then i don't want this light to affect the plane because it will cast reflection to this plane and we'll see the plane so i don't want that so just select the light last and then press ctrl l and then exclude same again press this and then shift the light you and like this now same with this press ctrl l and then exclude if, and if i now go to render view now you can see i cannot see the plane and you can see the animation is also really nice so yeah this is okay now i'm gonna show you some render settings which are very 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 simple so just go to render and if you have a very basic pc that you are not happy with so it's okay the render setting i will be showing you will be very smooth and fast on any pc so just turn on the denoiser of the render and then max sample should be 50 or less than 50 because i don't want 4000 max samples like this now go to output change if you want to make a video you can just file change the file format to ffmpeg video or you can change it to png now go to encoding and then change the output quality to low or if you want high you can just go high and encoding speed if you want your animation to be really smooth so just click on real time and if you want your animation to be mp4 so just go in the container and then change the value and uh, sorry not value change it to mp4 so yeah select and click on this option and then where you want to save your animation just go over here and type any name you want all right now just go over here and everything is nice but i want it to be like blur because every moving object is blur in a video so just make it blur and turn on the motion blur and yeah let's just do a little bit like color grading or something so view transform i don't want it to center because it's not that great as ajx but if you want standard you can do if you want filmic you can also change it to filmic and looks i will do it to i guess high contrast and the exposure i'm gonna just increase it a bit like 1.2 not 1 0.12 like this and then the gamma i'm gonna just decrease it like 0.97 now if i play the animation you can see everything is perfect so just a little change that i'm gonna just put the roughness of the transmission value to like 0.5 all right now this is it so guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something even a little bit i don't care i'm just happy that you have learned from this video so thank you so much comment down what you want to see next and i'm gonna see you in the next video bye bye